The Photos app on the iPhone has gone through quite the journey over the past few years. It got a major redesign in iOS 18, which in general, most people hated. But now that iOS 26 has been out for a while, I think Apple has finally cracked it, giving us a Photos app that combines the simplicity of what we had back in iOS 17 with the new technology and features in iOS 26, while also fixing most of the complaints people had before. But what's actually new about the Photos app in iOS 26? In this video, I'm going to show you all of the new features so you can get the most out of your new Photos app. Okay, let's get into it. One of the biggest changes and arguably one of the biggest improvements to the Photos app in iOS 26 is the complete overhaul of how you navigate it. So the first thing that you'll notice when you open the app is that the tabs are back down in the bottom left of the screen. You now have two options, library and collections. Library is your main photo library just as it's always been. Collections, on the other hand, is where you'll find all of the extra sections, things like shared albums, recent days, utilities, media types, and so on. These are now neatly tucked away in their own page, which makes it much easier to switch between your library and your collections without things getting cluttered. Next, there's the search button, which is now much easier to spot than it was in iOS 18. It's the little magnifying glass in the bottom right corner. Tap on that, and you can use natural language to search for whatever you like. So if you want photos of your dog, type in your dog's name and as long as your iPhone knows what they look like, it will find them. You can search for photos from a specific trip, a person at a certain location or even a particular date. And most of the time, your phone will do a pretty good job of finding what you need. Press the X to go back to your main library view and look at the top of the screen. Just to the left of the select button, you'll see filter and sort. Tap that and you can change how your photos are organized. By default, it's set to sort by date captured, which means the most recently taken photos appear at the bottom and the oldest at the top. But if you prefer, you can switch to recently added, which sorts based on when the images were added to your library, regardless of when they were taken. Here's an old but really useful trick, especially if you've got a large library. If you want to jump straight to the oldest photos in your library, just tap the time button at the top left. Your photos app will instantly scroll all the way back to the oldest media and to return to your newest photos tap library in the bottom left back in the filter and sort menu you'll also find filtering options tap filter and you can choose what to display for example only your favorites or only your edited photos you can even combine filters like viewing just your favorite videos which you would do by choosing the favorites filter and the videos filter to remove a filter tap the same options again or choose all items to return to normal there's also a not in album option, which many people have wanted for years. This was actually introduced in iOS 18, but this is where you'll find it in iOS 26. Then if you go into view options, you can zoom in or out on your photo grid, either by pressing the zoom in or zoom out buttons, or by pinching and pushing with your fingers, just like you would with a photo. You can also choose the aspect ratio grid, either show photos in their original ratio or as squares. And you can choose whether to include screenshots in your main library. If you turn that off, they'll still exist in the screenshots album within collections. They just won't appear in your main feed. You can also toggle shared with you, which controls whether photos shared with you in messages appear in your library. Turn it off if you'd rather keep things tidy. And finally, the select button up in the top right works as it always has. Tap it to select multiple photos or videos, and then you can share them using the share button in the bottom left delete them with the bin button in the bottom right or tap the ellipsis for more options like copy, favorite or duplicate. And that's everything that you need to know about navigating the Photos app in iOS 26. By the way, do you ever find yourself watching tips and tricks videos like this and thinking, how am I supposed to remember all of this? If that sounds like you, you should definitely check out iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my dedicated training portal for the iPhone. More than 150 lessons with more content on the way. It's broken down into modules, each one covering a different part of your iPhone. Inside every module, you'll find lessons, and each lesson comes with a short video showing you exactly what to do, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots, and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can go through everything at your own pace, or use the search tool to jump straight to whatever you're trying to figure out. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content, and it's all available for a single one-time price with all future updates included. And if you've got a Mac, I've also launched Mac Essentials Plus. It works exactly the same way, just for your Mac instead. You can buy either one individually or bundle the two together for the best possible price. If that sounds good to you, scan the QR code that you can see on screen or check the link in the description 
or the pinned comment. When you go into the collections tab at the bottom of the photos app, you might notice that this part of the app can look a little cluttered, but it's really easy to fix. You just need to know where to look. Start by tapping the ellipsis icon at the top of the screen. The first set of options here controls the layout. You can choose a square layout where everything is displayed as large tiles, or you can pick the middle option for smaller, equally sized tiles. The option on the left gives you large tiles on the top row, which is ideal for the collections that you use most, and smaller tiles for everything else. Below that, you'll see Show All and Collapse All. I would recommend tapping Collapse All and then tapping Reorder, which you'll now see at the bottom of your screen. From here, you can use the drag bars on the right hand side to rearrange your collections in whatever order suits you best. Now, something you could do back in iOS 18 was remove collections entirely, but that's no longer possible. In iOS 26, which is kind of a shame, but I also understand it from Apple's perspective. It is probably better to have people hide features than remove them altogether. Whatever appears here is fixed, but you can still reorder them. So think about which sections you use the most and move those to the top. I'd also suggest keeping the pin section right at the very top, and I'll explain why in the next tip. When you're happy with the order, tap the blue tick in the top right corner to confirm. Then use the little right pointing arrows beside each collection to expand the ones that you use most and keep the others collapsed. For example, on my main iPhone, I keep pinned at the top, followed by shared albums, recent days, utilities, and media types, all visible and expanded. Everything else, like memories, people and pets and trips, I keep collapsed near the bottom because I don't use them. And you'll see that with just a few quick adjustments like this, the collections section of your Photos app instantly becomes much more useful and organized. In the previous tip, I mentioned that I was going to show you how to make the most of the pin section, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a place where you can keep the parts of the Photos app that you use most often all in one easy to access section. So for example, you might not care much about shared albums as a whole, but you might have one specific shared album that you look at all the time. In that case, you could pin that individual shared album so it appears in your pinned section, and then move the full shared album section down to the bottom of your app. There are a couple of ways to manage your pinned section. The first is to tap the edit button next to pinned. From here, you'll see a list of available options. Anything with a green plus icon can be added to pinned by tapping it, and anything already pinned can be removed with the red minus button or reordered using the drag bars on the right. In the suggestions area, you'll see things like map, screenshots, people and pets and trips. But if you want to go more specific, like pinning a particular shared album, scroll down and tap any collection or album. From there, you can navigate through your library, select what you want, and it will be added to your pinned section. There's also another faster way to do this. From your main collections view, just long press on anything, a shared album, a recent day, even something in utilities like receipts, and choose pin. That item will then appear in your pinned section. And if you want to remove something, you don't need to go back into edit mode. Just long press on the item in pinned and choose unpin. It's a really handy way to create a mini personalized section within collections that focuses only on the stuff that you care about most. And it is definitely worth your time setting this up. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, you should definitely check out the proper weekly. It's my free weekly newsletter that lands in your inbox every Friday, packed with tech news from the week content I've been enjoying and a handy tip for the Apple ecosystem. Just scan the QR code on screen to sign up or follow the link in the description. In the main photo library, if you tap into a photo and then press the edit button at the bottom, the one that looks like three lines with dots, you'll be taken into the editing view. From here, if you tap the ellipsis icon in the top right corner, you'll see a new option in iOS 26 called appearance. Tap on this and by default, it will be set to system. That means the editing interface will follow your iPhone's overall appearance, light mode during the day and dark mode at night, for example. But if you prefer to always edit in dark mode, no matter what your iPhone is set to, you can just tap dark. You'll see that the editor immediately switches to dark mode, even if the rest of your phone is still in light mode. You can then go ahead and edit as normal, and this setting will apply to all photos that you edit moving forward. And if you ever want to switch it back, just return to the ellipsis menu, tap appearance again, and choose light or system, whatever you prefer. If you're using the Photos app on an iPhone 12 or newer, you might have noticed a little hexagon icon in the top right corner of some photos. It has a small scenery image inside it, and as you tap on it, 
your iPhone will create what's called a spatial scene. What this does is essentially deconstruct the photo into layers and then rebuild it in 3D. So when you move your phone around, it feels like you're viewing a three-dimensional version of that image. It's a really clever effect and it actually works with photos that you haven't taken on your iPhone too. So if you've imported images from a professional camera, this feature will work just as well. It is also non-destructive, which means it's just an effect. You can tap the same button again to remove it and your original photo won't be affected in any way. Now, while it's a fun feature, it is a little bit gimmicky and you might decide it's not something that you want to use. And if that's the case, you can actually turn off the option to create spatial photos altogether, giving you a slightly cleaner view of your photos. So to do that, go into settings, scroll down to apps, then choose photos. Scroll all the way to the bottom of that page and you'll see an option called spatial photos and videos. From there, disable the toggle called control for creating spatial photos. When you go back into the photos app, you'll see that the hexagon button has disappeared. Your iPhone can still create spatial scenes. If you ever want to re-enable it, you just go back into settings and turn that option on again. This last tip isn't exclusive to the photos app, but you'll probably find yourself using it most often there, so it is worth mentioning. If you open any photo, tap the edit button at the bottom of the screen and then tap the markup icon, the little pen in the top right corner, you'll be taken to the familiar markup view with all your pens, pencils, and tools for drawing or annotating. But in iOS 26, there is a new feature here. If you tap the plus button in the bottom right corner, you'll now see a tool called loop. Tap on that, and a magnifying loop will appear on your photo. You can tap the line icon to change the color of the area around the magnifying glass, or choose no color at all if you prefer. Use the blue handle to adjust the size of the loop and use the green handle to control the level of zoom, moving it from the top or 12 o'clock position down towards the right or three o'clock increases the magnification with 12 o'clock being the least and three o'clock being the most. You can then drag the loop anywhere that you like on the image to highlight or zoom in on specific details. Perfect for pointing something out clearly in a photo. So there you go, that was everything new in the Photos app in iOS 26. As you can see, there aren't a huge number of changes, but the changes that Apple have added, in my opinion, are really useful and definitely make up for a lot of the shortcomings of the app in iOS 18. What do you think? Were there any new features that you think I've missed that I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.